there. Thank you so much for joining us for our panel discussion today. You'll see I have with me Susan Jarbo, Linda Baker, and Kathy Cronin. So this is going to be a great panel. I also have the honor of introducing the topic, which hopefully you will love. But before we get to that, as always, let's just take a moment to kind of get centered and be present in a time of prayer. I invite you to get comfortable, to think on the here and now, right here, right now. Close your eyes if you'd like and take a breath with us as we turn within. Setting aside anything that might be niggling in our mind or sitting on our hearts and allowing this moment to be entirely ours, where all of our thoughts, all of our feelings, all of our actions are centered on the here and now. In this moment, we are one. In this moment, God is. God is all. As we turn within, we can find that divinity and settle there and just be. Thank you, God, for this moment, for this opportunity, and for this talk. Amen. So I went way back into the old Unity Library, and I got this book. It's hard to read. It says, God is the answer. And it's written by Dana. I can't really read the name off the cover. Gatlin, I think. Let's see if I got that right. Yes, Dana Gatlin. God is the answer. And I was really struck by um, this chapter. This is chapter three, which you can't see when I do that. It's called Dare to Trust God. When I'm working with people who are trying to figure out their relationship with their higher power, almost always this comes up. How do I know if I give it to God, I'll get back something that I want, something that means something to me? And of course, that's a separation consciousness. Dana helps us with this answer. I hope you'll enjoy it. Dare, dare to trust God. Do you feel poor, sick, unhappy, discouraged? Then the most helpful thing you can do is change the character of your thoughts. Shift your center of attention. Find a new interest, something promising and compelling something that will galvanize your mind and lift it out of its dreary rut. Change your way of thinking about yourself and your difficulties. But how can I, you may answer. That is the way things are. There is nothing pleasant in my life to think about. Everything is constantly getting more snarled and hopeless. I am at the end of my rope. Very well then, give up the rope. Give up your last inch of frail, battered, unsatisfactory, mortal rope. Dare, swing out in your thoughts and feelings. Swing out on God. Once when I felt weak, confused, defeated, and frightened, I found this idea of daring and almost miraculous help in lifting me out of my mental confusion, out of the needs and difficulties that surrounded me, over into the invisible, unlimited, infinite realm of spirit. Daring, right where I am, daring to trust in God. I am God's child. I am Daring to claim him as my father. I am daring the unshakable truth of all his glorious promises. God is. God can help me. God will. I cannot describe the surge of new strength, courage, interest, and expectancy 
that this mere change in thoughts and habits will arouse. Dare to swing out on the promise of the great unseen. Dare to claim his life and strength and power. Dare to cast aside mortal beliefs in order to rely on God and to lean on him only. Dare to perceive and acknowledge him in the face of adverse seemings. Dare to trust him through and above every situation in the world. So you get a flavor of that chapter. It goes on to say that when we start to think, you know, I want God to give me this. And what if I don't get this? If I give it up and give it to God, I don't want to give up my control. And for me, that's separate thinking. When we realize in oneness that God isn't somewhere out there, but somewhere within, and we can empower the situation by turning to God, by celebrating our oneness, and by changing our thoughts and feelings. I know you all know this, and I'm hoping you will share your experience, strength, and hope in daring to trust God. Ladies? Yes. Well, there are times when I know that it's not working out in my favor, and that's exactly what I have to do. I surrender into the situation. And I have to do that because I'm fighting within myself. I, the fight within myself is I'm trying to make my will be done. And I've got a stumbling block here. I got to back up and I just have to surrender into it. And when the time is right, somehow the answer is going to come. And But I think that's the hardest part, at least it is for me, to be able to recognize and surrender that I'm, it's not my will that's to be done. So I'm always striving to figure out when it becomes God's will. Okay, you can help me do that. Talk some more about it. Maybe the panel can add to that too. I am all ears. Thank you, Linda. I love that. Um, I have to remind myself that when I'm wondering is this God's will? Is this God's will? That God doesn't hint with me. When it's God, I know it. And when I'm thinking, is it? It's probably not. It's probably my ego because I do that. Uh, for me, when, when I am deep in my faith and all prayed up, if the answer I get is no or different than what I think I want, my answer, my response needs to be thank you. Because I don't know all of the situations. I don't know everyone's heart that's involved in this. I know what I would like to see happen, but I know if I get the wrong, the, it, no, then it wouldn't have happened the way I wanted it to if I'd gone forward. I know that. Because when I open it up to the divine, I'm including all of the oneness in the world. The example I use is I might really want this job. I've wanted this job so long. And we've talked a little about that. And I can't get the job. I don't know why not. I'm fully qualified. I've done all the work. I've prayed about it. And then I find out sometime that same day that there was something in that job that made it totally undesirable. And if I had gotten it, it would have been a mistake. And that's what happens when I open it up. Thank you, Linda. That was great. Anybody else? Kathy? Um, I'll go next. So as we think about that, and this, this one, Dare to Trust God, is so pertinent for me with what's going on right now in our country with an upcoming election and the divide that's going on and everything that's happening. And I've had to so much go, 
I have to trust that God's going to bring the right outcome. And in my prayers daily, I turn this over to him going, because I can't make everything happen, but I, I turn it to him that the voters are enlightened to recognize those candidates that are best to serve and want to do the best for our country. Um, to basically, I put it into God's hands. I trust that justice is going to prevail where it needs to. Um, I have to trust that God knows the ultimate big plan. And so I have to trust, but I also have to feel like I'm doing some part of my part. If it's writing letters to my representatives and, you know, expressing my feelings that maybe that that part of me participating is that spark that enlightens them to carry out God's work. It's the action to be taken somewhere along the line by having a voice. I can't sit at home complaining or writing letters. I'm a part of this, you know, group that sends letters encouraging people to get out to vote, um, to choose the, to be selective on your candidates, to know what's going on. So it's being actively involved. I can do my part, but ultimately I have to trust that the grid big picture is in God's hands and that God will bring what is right for the people, for our democracy, that the right people will come to serve and be brought to it, but it's doing my part that I can, and then I have to dare to trust that God is orchestrating the best possible outcome in the end. And so when I get discouraged, I just sort of go, God, it's in your hands, and I know you're you're going, you're controlling that, you're you're overseeing this, and you want which is for the highest good of everyone here in our country in and in the world, because what we do here in America affects the world. So um, I just sort of, this is so appropriate for me that, you know, I have to say, I dare to trust that God is working behind the scenes on all of this. So thank you for bringing this topic for me. It brings some peace and not going out there flying my flag, <laughs> pro being people. So thank you. I love that, Kathy, and you're right, that's so hard, and not just in America, but all over the world, we're watching um, elections come up and being put down, and knowing that um, God is in it all, God is right there. For me, a big part of the action I can take is loving and understanding people who have very different views than I do and knowing that we are on this planet together and that right outcomes are divine. So thank you for bringing that up, Kathy. That was beautiful. Susan, do you have thoughts? Of course you do. Sure. You share them? <laughs> and in listening to all of you, <clears throat> What I noticed is we, you know, we're talking about several different arenas of life. You know, there's our our personal lives and what we're trying to do in our personal lives, situations that we may want to try to fix. And then um, Kathy brought us to the world stage and events way beyond our control. What I have found is I need to remind myself that I don't have to fix this, that I can turn it over to God. And one of the influences on me is our culture, our individualistic, achievement-oriented culture. And there are lots of good things about that. So I, I'm not totally dissing our lifestyle. But I have this sense that I should be able to figure it out myself. That I have a responsibility to figure it out myself. And when I remind myself, I can talk to God about this, I can leave it in God's hands and wait and see what happens, I feel such a sense of relief. <laughs> you know, it's like there's a weight off my shoulders. Yeah. And so uh, waiting upon God is is something I really strive for. It's it's an area 
in which I practice patience. I have to deliberately practice patience and be very aware. Um, when Kathy was talking about the world stage, I um, belong to several different groups. And as part of that, they have uh, what do you say, mechanisms for me to petition my lawmakers or other people who are involved. I recently sent a petition to the chancellor of the University of Wisconsin. And so like Kathy, uh, I'm trying to take some action that's within my grasp and yet let God worry about the outcome. There's something that we teach in the communication discipline when we talk about working with other people, arguing with other people, negotiating with other people, that we cannot have attachments to outcomes. And I think uh, that's true when we are talking with God. We, we want God to do this <laughs> or that. And we have to be, I think we have to be much more open than that and, and not have something that we really want. And letting go of attachments is not just for uh, conflict situations. Letting go of attachments is a way of living one's life. And attachments to outcomes, like the election, let's say, um, well, in the first place, they're not practical. And in the second place, um, you need to uh, step back a bit. I think part of our lives on this planet are to be a bit of an observer. And I try to detach from outcomes, particularly political outcomes, and just say, may God is in charge. And after the election, I might think God wasn't in charge, but sooner or later, things are going to work out the way he wants so I apologize if this answer has sort of been all over the place, but we went all over the place. So <laughs> there you have it. Thank you, Susan. That was uh, wonderful. You reminded me of the saying, everything will be all right in the end. If it's not all right, it's not the end. And and those, those are words to live by. Would anyone like to say anything else before we close that so this was a big topic, Linda? Yeah, I would. Um, if, if I'm letting God make the answer, then to me, it means that the answer, there's a positivity, a positive effect that takes place, not the negative effects. Uh, and... <clears throat> In other words, how we act because of the love that we have for our country must be peaceful. That's a positive act. We're not in a civil war and we don't want to be in a civil war. So just think to your positive thoughts all about love and all about peace. I know I sound like a hippie from the 60s, but, but maybe we, we, we need to listen to those again. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. I want to respond to that, what Linda's saying about being the hippies from the 60s. And if you, rec if you go back to, from those of us who were in the 60s and were the, you know, peace and that, there was conflict going on in the world. There was things going on. And it was that peaceful protest about, you know, it's all about love. It was trying to bring that energy back around from that negative energy to being 
open. And that's what needs to be seen is that we can start bringing, if we start focusing, like you said, on the positive, bringing that positive energy, recognizing about being loving and accepting and, you know, whatever there are, understanding the other person's point of view, understanding what's important to it. Um, I just had conversation with uh, my uh, great niece who's, um, you know, in her final year of college and where the young people are, their points of view and asking her is, you know, do you understand your ramifications on how you vote? And do you understand these things? Understanding their point of view, why they want to go this direction, but also in guiding them to see, you know, get the bigger picture. Sometimes we need to get the bigger picture um, to know what's going to be able to manifest in the things. Or like we said, if it's, you know, if it's, it may not be over yet that we have to wait for the outcome, but sometimes it is to look at a bigger picture and not just the narrow, our narrow points of view. So, you know, so yes, the hippies in the 60s brought about change and we went through many years of peaceful coexistence was, it's all about love to get out of a conflict. So, And part of that big picture is respect for those that came before us especially the soldiers that we've lost in the past. Don't ever forget. Don't let it be in vain. Everything they, that they gave, that they laid down. Uh, an obligation or an opportunity to make life worth what the people before us were fighting to allow, to live in a way that honors them. Any other comments before we move forward? <clears throat> okay, I have one more, and this is off of something you said, Linda, and then Kathy, you kind of followed up on that. Um, hate does not cure hate. It takes love, and the love that was poured into society, into the world, did create a lasting peace that lasted in America, at least for many, many years. And, uh, and we can be grateful. It would be terrific if that was enough, but I think we need to love it up again and, and really fill the world with love. So thank you to my wonderful panel. It is just such a joy to share these topics. I never know where they're gonna go. Um, I, I adore each of you and I thank you. And thank you, our viewing audience, for being with us today. We hope that you'll leave comments here or contact the church. That information is available at the end of the video. We would love to hear from you. And on behalf of my panel, I would like to dare you, trust God. Whatever you're facing, whatever it is, remember the dare. Trust in God and see if that doesn't bring about the highest and best results. Thank you for joining us. God bless. Bye. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.